What's up, everybody? Brett here, back today playing some more Battle Brothers. And we are picking up where we left off last time. I told you guys that we would start with our Oath Taker campaign and give it some more time today um, than we have been. Just as a kind of a happenstance of playing it second in all of our episodes, they've kind of fallen behind in both days and progress. And I don't want that to happen. So we're here at Al Hazred. Off camera, I went ahead and just kind of looked around at some stuff to see if there were any moves that we could make. The combination of ambush trade routes and rebuilding effort has made it so that the sell prices here are incredible. And I think we're going to look into selling some things. Ah, uh, man, our brothers are so beat up. I was also looking at just giving Miguel here um, something a little more standard. Something a little more defensive to try and keep him alive through the early game. And... I think that's fine. But boy, our oath has been killing us. We've got all of these injuries. Uh, but we, we can heal up. We can heal up and we can repair up. We need to get that done for sure. We're low on a lot of stuff. And we're going to sell some of this stuff. I think we might sell both of these woodcutter's axes. If I'm being real. And probably this hood as well. Could sell the short sword. We, yeah, we're going to need more tools. Look at the amount of tools that we have available. We're going to need more ammunition. The prices here to, to buy aren't quite good. We don't need them yet. Uh, maybe after we do one of these missions, the prices will come down for buying. So we sell first, then we come back and we buy after. Could be a good strategy. Maybe pick up this Southern Mail shirt. Something like that. I don't know. Um, I wanted to go ahead, though. I saw that there was a character here whose background I've almost never messed with. Zahiri the dog is a historian. I cannot remember whether or not I've had a historian, especially not one that's going the distance. So I would like to involve this this background in our run. And I think it's even fitting. The Oath Takers would have their own historian, just like they would have their own monk. You know, just like they would take in noble characters. I think the background of historian fits. We just have to hope they don't suck, right? Just like uh, I think we had a monk character in the beginning of this Let's Play who got wrecked, uh, who would have been a decent brother. This guy... Historians are studious individuals with vast amounts of knowledge. None of it any use on the battlefield. So, Zahiri the dog. Interesting interesting title for him. A scholar of al Hazred's college, Zahiri records the histories of the world for future generations. Bored with reading about adventures, the historian figured he'd suit up to fashion himself a closer look at the real thing. You can place good faith in Zahiri's earnest want to research, but maybe not so much faith in his ability to swing a sword. We'll pick him up. And also partially because he's incredibly cheap. Now, this is where we cross our fingers and hope that he isn't garbage. And this is interesting. I did not remember that historians gain plus 15% experience. Brawlers gain plus 100% damage when unarmed. I think I remembered that. Caravan hands can have events that increase your wagon size. You guys... You know, you're not going to have anything special here. And then the Beast Slayer has nothing that I know of. But this guy is loyal. He's much less likely to leave us even when we run out of crowns and provisions. That's awesome. And he's also brave. That's pretty sick. This guy is not bad. He's got a two bonus in range skill. And some good defensive star placement. I mean, I, I hate the two in range defense. This would be much better served in any other department. And he has low melee skill, low HP. You know, fatigue is whatever because he's not actually doing anything yet. Give him a sword here. Give him a spear, rather. Place him back here on guard duty. Um. Yeah, for 140, he's not bad. He could become a decent ranged character if we just constantly pump range skill. By the end of it, he could be okay. You know, a bit of a, a hybrid type character. I'm happy with this. Zahiri the dog. If you'd like to claim him as one of, you know, one of you guys in the comment section, just let me know. If you'd like to claim him, just hit me up. Let me drink a little water, guys. I'm like, I'm dying of dehydration right now. It is very hot outside today. I did a bunch of jiu-jitsu this morning. Got very uh, dehydrated. Then I went in the sun and did a bunch of yard work for a couple hours without really realizing just how warm it was. And I think I'm, I'm paying the iron price. But anyway, guys, that was great pickup for us. Barely ate into our crowns at all. Remember, we also don't have to pay them yet. 
Um, we do need more stuff, but we can't quite afford it. What do they have in the armor? We want armor. We really could use a nice set of armor for him. Southern male shirt. Okay. Okay, we're good. I'm going to keep these just in case we get another brother. Who knows? We've got multiple contracts here. Hunt down would terrorize them. I'm anticipating this just being more hyenas, which I think we can take uh, readily. So let's just accept that right now. And then this one, I think, was for us to go somewhere and fight some bandits or something. So our path is set for now. We see the footprints right away here. So let's go out into the sand and see what there is to see. Could be snakes. I mean, we haven't seen any snakes yet. Oh, if we could pull these guys into the fight, they're not not—they're not going to let us. That's fine. I don't think we need them to beat three hyenas. It might be nice. Ooh, some high ground here. Do we mess with the high ground? Let's pass here. Let's see how they move. Galdrick should not fight. Mudun or Hamian and Miguel need to be the ones that take this fight for us. Alright. Move here. Move there. Move here. Yeah, and we anticipated that. That gives us a 2v1. I like this here, and I like this. I like that spear wall there. In case they just try to jump over. If they move to the other side, just completely ignore our high ground position, which they might do. Dangerous, man. Going for this high ground might not have been the best strategy. Hindsight being 2020 and all. So this is what we're going to do. We've got to lock this guy down. If he jumps back here on Ga uh, Gaedric or something, or Galdric, we're, we're going to be in trouble. So we're going to have to trust Mudun to take this 1v1. And we're going to need Zahiri to step up. That's perfect. We needed that. This guy's going to get a chance to attack. They're going to be faster than me. I'm not comfortable stepping in here and doing the attack quite yet. We could push, but that's, I mean... Good step here. Try to push here. And then have him attack Zahiri, but that'll kill him. I think this thing will smash Zahiri. And we can also bring Erhamian in. Yep. I think he should be able to attack next turn. Alright, don't kill me, bro. Alright, nice. We could have used that attack to land. But with no armor, he's not making out too badly in this. Huge. Nice. And I think the spear really added to his chance to hit. You good, sir. We'll move you in. There's no real risk here to moving you in. Come on, Mudun. A couple hits to the head, not bad. I mean, that's where he's almost most heavily armored. Set up here, here, and starting to break. Okay, able to do this relatively easily, but this could have gone sideways. I'm sure you guys can see that. Our decision to step in with Voodoo, I think, was clutch. We're going to run him down. And they're not dropping anything, at least not that I can see. Which sucks, because they, they dropped some loot that's pretty valuable. We're just getting the Raging Hyena fur. Hmm... It'll sell for a good bit, which is fine because we don't have the money to do anything with it anyway at the taxidermist. So we'll probably just sell it. You're not entirely sure as you're not particularly knowledgeable about the creature, but you find yourself staring at the hyenas with contempt. They bear the marks of trash diggers, cretins which hunt the weak despite having the strength and numbers to fight for their food. It is only when meeting you, seeing their own finality on the line, do they decide to fulfill their beastly destiny. You cut their heads off and ready to return to Radwan. Ibn Kamal of Al Hazrid. No way I pronounced that all correctly, but I did my best. So excellent. Let's go back and get paid. 
while we travel we heal a little bit but we don't even have enough tools to deal with this so a successful hunt we definitely need the markets to be open here damn we're not going to make much money off of this we sell this here that's great that's great for us tempted to sell the sword as well we have enough food hmm We need tools, but these are so badly overpriced, it's painful. And I don't know if we can go to this next fight in the condition that we're in. We're going to need to sit and rest for a minute. I think we can afford to pass on the, the extremely expensive ammunition, but I don't think we can afford to pass on the tools. Which hurts my heart. Because I would love to get this southern male shirt here, and I can't do both. Let me check our gear out here. Just kind of seeing what's what's destroyed I'd be replacing the padded leather here and then switching the padded leather to the back to Zahiri I'm figuring it out guys I'm trying to figure it out 695 is overpriced what do you want in here yeah 868 geez and that's why we don't purchase from there god I, well, this campaign, we're not going to be using handguns for these dudes or anything like that. But man, one fire pot can really turn the tide of battle. Yeah, I got to pull the trigger on something, and I think we just have to have tools. I could go for both, because we're not technically paying for anything. And I just have to I have to win this, though. That's going, that's going all in. I'm going to do it. It's kind of crazy. But this is where we're at. We needed the tools to help us, and we need the better armor. We're not going to be repairing that. That's basically a t-shirt. And let's take this contract and just hope we can do it. It's Nomads for 470 And it's North, okay. And it's close by. I was expecting, when I saw North, I was like, ah, I'm probably going to have to go way up here, chew into a bunch of my food. But instead what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to camp. It might even be wise and I want to be careful how time flies here. I don't want anything to sneak up on me out here or these guys to like abandon ship. So how are we doing? Really need some healing. Our armor's close to being fully repaired on everyone. I think we can afford to wait just a little bit longer. Okay, citizens, that scared me for a second. Okay, random nomads. That's not good. We're sandwiched between nomads. We have to do this to make the money that we need. Um, damn. I can attack them, beat them, and then run and try to go around, which I think I'm going to do. There's also some sort of beast out here. Okay. The only one who's really hurting right here is Galdrick. So we're going to switch it up. Call that good. Get me in there. I have to get this done. The 400 and something crowns is... What we need. Happy to see some 30s here. Man, landing two shots in a row just once. The odds are obviously are not good on that, but that would have been sick. We step here, we spear wall. Nice. I don't really like spreading damage around, but getting a little damage right off the bat on the dudes. A, a decapitation right off the bat, also huge. Um, and we're going to step out here into the open. Lock him down. Doesn't really make my other plays kind of make sense, which I don't like. My spear wall, that is. But I like locking him down with Miguel. I think Miguel just straight up beats him in a 1v1. Something like this. We'll see how they move. And we can bring... I mean, Galdrick is not worthless. I mean, his, his armor's up. We just don't want him to be the one engaged on. We want to engage on them kind of at our leisure 
Excellent. And a double shield wall is very annoying. But we're just going to take advantage of this turn to switch. I'll take 250s. That's, that's no problem. And I know someone in the comments asked for uh, a little bit more of this. The battle log. So I'm going to give it to you. I think it's good to have. But I don't like to have it up all the time, mostly for aesthetic reasons. Alright, he stepped into a triple surround. Weak weapons here, they're just bonkers. The sword is going to suck a little bit against our... And by suck, I mean it's going to suck for us. Uh, because our armor is not so good yet. Nice. Okay. And with that, we step down here and put some damage on him. And with that, we step here and get a five-man surround. Feels good. Go team. And just fatigue him. So every time you hit, you also cause fatigue. It's not really a secret. It's just a little bit at a time. So you can wear down guys on the battlefield just by hitting them. You don't even necessarily need to like do damage or have them do attacks. So we got a Saif, which is, you know, these things kind of are worth a little bit of money. We got some extra tools, a little ammo. You know, the food is probably the best thing we got here and a little bit extra crowns. A better helmet. Nice. I mean, that's money. That's money in the bank. That's experience for our bros. And then now if you want to take those seven dudes on, we maybe can. Student here for Arathon. A four in fatigue. I like that. Huh. The rest of these rolls are so-so. High initiative is sort of whatever. I'm going to take the four in HP and I'm going to take the two in range skill. I don't intend to have too many range bros on this team. And the ones that we do have, I think I want them all to be kind of like uh, hybrids. So, Zahiri and Arathorn are looking to be hybrid bros. Let's get him Colossus. It's a nice 12 HP bump. Love the four roll and range skill. We'll take that and be happy about it. Um, I'm going to take the three in fatigue as well. And the Brave that he has is also making his resolve. I don't really feel the need to pump this right away, even though, like right here, looking like I need it. I'm just going to take these three and hit points. And that was an additional, it ended up giving me a bonus hit point because of Colossus. And he went from having, what was it, like 51 HP to now 67, something, something like that. My numbers might be a little off. Uh, but that's much better for him. These Nomads, man, can we just take these dudes? Can we just smash them? That, that fight gave me a little bit of confidence, but this is two additional dudes, and two additional dudes is, I'm not going to say exponentially more dangerous, but their ability to surround, to shut down my range stuff, to get better engagements is just night and day. Between being one less than us and then being one more than us. Let's see. I'll attack you. I could, I could not take this fight. They're not really shielded. They're not really armored. I mean, these guys are in trash gear. And I'm not seeing any dangerous weapons whatsoever. So, honestly, not scared right now. Let's spear wall. Shooting here because if we miss, we do have a greater likelihood of hitting someone else. That miss kind of sucks. So we're going to do something a little like controversial here. We're going to do this and step in. And what this does is we've locked down three of these dudes. Okay, I see how it is. And we move here. And the only ones who can kind of step around are these... Well, I guess these three. They're going to have a hard time getting past us to Aerothorn. But even still, it's not like he's not armored. If we step in here, we can't even attack, so we're not going to. Could shield wall and try to avoid this hit, but our armor is pretty high. We just need to land hits. This round is super crucial. If we land hits this round, we're happy. If we whiff everything, we'll be in trouble. And we need to not get bonked. Nice. Him just sitting here and shield walling is fine with us. Kind of just wanted to shoot into here. Yeah, maybe get lucky. So we've got a 76, 
77 to 81. We take that. Beautiful. And now we start bullying those dudes. We spear wall again. He's zoning out this entire area by himself. 73 because we've got a two man here. And that was a risky step in. And his shield wall kind of allowed him to easily break past our spear wall. That's alright. Decent armor. His HP is in a better place now. He should hold. Thankfully, they brought pretty crappy weapons to this fight. And we switch. No, I don't have enough AP. Okay. Nice. Breaking them is even better. Don't even have to try to get rid of them. That was nice as well. Got him wavering. Beautiful. Their whole front line is going. Let's try to make them all go. Alright, that wavered him a bit more. Let's bring our boy here to help Zahiri. This is still dangerous for Zahiri. The fact that he hit him in the head was the best case scenario. Funny enough. Beautiful. Could not have asked for that to go better. And this is over. Wonderful. This is how the fight should have gone. With a little bit of tactics. But it's nice to see that it's how this fight actually went. Because a little bit of bad RNG could have very easily crushed us here. And more food that we were going to have to buy anyway. Some crowns. Half a stack of tools, which is about 160 gold. At a... Uh, I'll... I can't remember what it's called. The place where we're going. So, Nice. Nomad leather cap is better than a leather head wrap. We needed to equip that. And let's see, did we get some levels from that? I didn't even see. We got one on Galdrick, nice. And on him, we're going to go ahead and take Brawny. I take Brawny on pretty much everyone. Nomad, almost no matter the build. Um, Let's see here. So, this initiative is terrible. Is it because of his injuries? It's got to be. So, let's, let's get a little more fatigue here. I think that's a good pickup. Let's get the three here in melee skill and I wish we had something better in melee defense but we don't but this is an okay opportunity for him to pump his resolve just a little bit here not bad at all and let's go get paid man because our oath of sacrifice is going to end very soon I don't actually know if it's going to be midnight or what well, let's take our money and see what's up the price is here to sell probably not as good now and it's not it's a little worse But I'm not really mad at it. Let's sell some of the busted stuff and the stuff we don't need. Get us up to a kind of a healthy amount. And boom, the tools just like that. I think are about 50, 50 cheaper. Could use some ammo as well. Is there any cheap armor we could have bought? I don't think so. Let's go in here and give... This is a 40, this is a 50. Let's give him that. It's a slight, slight upgrade. Can definitely sell some of these shields. Probably sell all of these shields. Could probably sell the Saif as well. We need money more than anything else. Uh, because we're about to spend money. And I think what we're going to do. Instead of trying to explore and go somewhere new. We're going to go back to the other southern city state. And get back involved with some of the arenas. That's good money. And I'm, I'm tempted. I think we need to hold off on buying ammo. We're good on food. The other city, I think, will like us more and, and treat us a little bit more fairly, but we need to be able to repair along the way, along the road. So let's take advantage of that. And just one last peek at the armor. The price for the Southern Mail shirt did come down, but we're going to have to start paying our bros very soon here. We can look at the hires and see if anything changed while we were resting and stuff. No, I don't think a gambler is what we want. So let's just roll out. And just like that, the Oath of Sacrifice has been fulfilled. The Priory Monks will go days without water, weeks without food, and forever without sex. It is believed that sacrifice is the salt of all things, and is so powerful an element that in the ashes of those who have willingly suffered, one finds the residue of endurance itself. Now, having undertaken a similar oath, you understand why the holy men handle the ashen remains of their brethren with a sort of maternal care. 
For the Light Brigade, this everlasting strength was spread across the company, for misery is a terrible thing. But shared misery, taken head on and shoulder to shoulder with your brothers in arms, is a poignant elixir. One that narrows the mind unto which, unto that which needs to be done, and eschews all earthly matters. Now the men shall heal up, and their minds return to the tethers which keep them grounded. Leave it to the monks to sacrifice for the long haul. They are of stronger intellects and faiths. Ones to look to, not foolishly follow feeling you may do the same as them. As for the future, it is time the oath takers take another oath. So we gain renown, and we went above and beyond in fulfilling the oath, so I think we got extra renowned for that and our bros are all super eager wonderful so to check our renown we would go to our retinue and see that we are currently recognized our renown is up to 410 your renown is your repute as a professional mercenary company and reflects how reliable and competent people judge you to be the higher your renown the higher paid and more difficult contracts people will entrust you with renown increases on successfully completing ambitions and contracts and winning battles and decreases on failing to do so so this allows us to fill this seat here at our campfire with any of these interesting characters here any of these interesting followers as they're referred to in order to unlock them you have to do a thing there's a requirement right so for the lookout for instance we have to have discovered 10 locations on our own they increase our sight radius by 25 percent and reveal extended information about footprints can kind of tell you what you're chasing uh, having a quick lookout with sharp eyes, travel in advance of the company can prove invaluable in being aware of dangers and points of interest before others become aware of the company. So they're an expensive thing. Um, there are certain ones of these that I value way higher than others. Um, let me see. Is it the cartographer? Yes, I like getting paid to discover locations. All the ones that basically deal with money are quite good. I love the scout because to me, traveling 15% faster means... I'm making 15% more, more money. I'm doing 15% more of the game in the time the game takes. So when we're talking hundreds of days worth of a playthrough, this is money. This is money, 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 huge. It means that nothing can ever chase me down, and I can chase down everything else. The scout, I think, is one of the best ones that you can get. And also prevents sickness and accidents due to terrain, which is nice. Um, who else? Uh, let's see. The negotiator is great. You'll basically always get a better contract, pretty much. Um, so, once again, more money. And the recruiter's pretty good. I think I usually go with the paymaster. Reducing the daily wage by 15%. Lowering the chance of desertion is cool. We're going to have to really rely on this for our other anatomist Let's Play. Um, because, yeah, those dudes are never happy. And uh, we've got some, some scoundrels on that squad. We've got killers and thieves and things. Surgeon, traders, agents, there's a lot of stuff. These dudes, and they get more expensive, supposedly, the better their their backgrounds. The agent, let's see. Anyway, some of these do pretty sweet stuff. I love this one. The bounty hunter might be, actually, this one might be my favorite. Because it makes more champions appear, and they're really fun to fight, and they're a great challenge to fight. And they usually carry legendary items, so, but you're not going to get this till later. It's expensive, and you need to have... Uh, legendary items of your own in order to unlock them but we don't have the gold for this regardless so let's uh make like a baby and head out and go back to Hakim al Ramal. the only question is do we follow the road or do we cut through the desert here ah I didn't have the game pause that wasn't very smart but we're fine I'm tempted to take a bit of a shortcut here we're not going to go fully through the desert because the further away you get from civilization, the harder the fights, right? So going through here is just me walking past a bunch of fights I can't take, even though it's kind of nice to see what's out there. The nomads, however, we just took these types of fights. We could maybe pull them in. No, they don't, they don't want any of that. And this is nice. We get to chase them. We get to scout all at the same time. So... These guys, pretty much the same as the last guys. Let's wait here. We're in a little bit better shape. Some of our injuries are gone. Happy to see that. And we're going to try to take this fight just like we took the last one. As intelligently as possible. Beautiful. Freak them out right off the jump. 
we step in here, once again, it does us no good to step all the way in. Hmm, I didn't leave myself a good target, so that wasn't very smart of me. Uh, but instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step in here, the safe pocket area, and then we'll have a lot of dudes to shoot at after the fact. I'm going to shield wall here, because someone's going to step in and try to smack Galdrick. Almost certainly. So let's give him a good chance to not get hurt. Just pocket sand all in my face. Okay. He chooses to shield wall probably because his odds are very low of hitting me. And here, 45s. Excellent. And I gotta go with the numbers here. 77 was a great option. That guy being dead is great. And we're gonna move in here now that the dust is kind of settled. We're spreading the damage around a little bit too much. Nice. But one broken and one dead. Very good start. The guy circling around to get to Aerithorn. That's fine. I am not afraid. Another man who never gets to attack us. And kind of freeze up or hammy if we want. Excellent damage. Very good damage. And with that, I'm going to switch us out here. And just tuck Arathorn in. These guys cannot hurt him. Good hit. We got an injury on him too. Gonna make him much less effective in combat. This guy's gonna re yeah, He's gonna run. I don't blame him. And I don't think we're gonna be able to catch him. Really no point in trying. But we gotta make him... He's gotta flee. And it's over. And we got a level on Zahiri, so awesome. More food? We're basically getting fed off of killing these guys. And we probably got a surplus in tools from that. More than we lost, that is. We were able to kind of hurt them before they hurt us. And student plus the historian buff, man. A bonus 30% to his learning. Once again, pumping his range skill here. Pumping his fatigue here. And pumping a natural 4 and hit points. Lots of 4s in his future. Would like to get him some melee rolls, but these are have been very low. If I see a 4, a natural 4 in Resolve, I'll take that. Just to get him close to that 50 mark that I, I think is pretty good for, like, mid-game. And then if I see a really good roll in Melee skill, I will take it. But we're happy to just slowly get his range skill up and up and up until eventually, you know, it's, it's usable. He might have to use some form of crossbow or something like that to have a better chance to hit. But that was great for us. Followers of the Light Brigade need not just be fighters. It appears that with the company's growing renown and prestige, there may be others willing to ride the coattails. Perhaps these tag-alongs may be of great utility to the company, even if they are not contributing on the battlefield. That's basically the game's way of telling you, hey, check out the retinue button. So I'm looking at the time, and we're getting close to that time where we would normally switch over to the other side, but I think we're going to go long today. Um, and just kind of hang out with our Oath Taker bros. Because we're still a few days behind the Anatomist. Sitting alone in thought isn't just a physical task. You must clear your mind of all obstruction and distraction. Cutting away every element until you are left to darkness in its purest state. Where mere glimmers can become divinations. Brightly standing amidst all that which is black. And there it is. Coming to you in an instant. Truth effervescent in its shining... Oh, shimmering clarity. Held out to you by the glow of young Anselm's hand. The truth of your purpose... And the Light Brigade's future. It must undertake but one oath. Alright. Arrogance is an insidious killer. I love it. That's clearly a Darkest Dungeon reference. Um, we earn 25% fewer crowns from contracts, but we, we gain 10% more experience. And if we do six contracts, we gain bonus renown. As you are indeed men in pursuit of power, always listen to the weak. For the weak know the strong better than you do. And in turn, they shall know you better than you know yourself. We have the Oath of Honor. 
Your men start battle at confident morale, but we cannot use ranged weapons. Huh. Uh, we're only using one of them right now. The benefit is quite nice. And if we could kill... Let's see, it says 50 men. Without them being engaged by other... So, like, 1v1s. We're not strong enough for this yet. But I'll read it anyway. While the arrow is knocked, the mind turns. While the sword swings, all is where it should be. Set aside the craft of archery and go into the melee. Thrusting... Or trusting. No, don't thrust. Uh, or, or thrust. Trusting that what your steel seeks, it shall find. And then lastly here, I'm scared of this. Oath of Distinction. Young Anselm frequently pursued solitude, sometimes even on the battlefield. Prove yourself worthy in such a manner that not even the old gods may claim their eyes have erred and what glories they have seen. Your men gain 40% more experience. Additionally, they get plus 10 resolve, plus 3 fatigue recovery per turn. That's incredible. And deal 10% more damage if there are no allies on adjacent tiles. You gain extra renown if one of your men level up two times. However, your men gain no experience for allied kills. We've been able to spread the kills around, kind of. You know, we're, we're sucking up a few of the kills with our Oathtaker brothers, but I think everyone's starting to contribute. This could be brutal for us, but it's amazing for our combat effectiveness. This is the safe route. We're going to go with this. We're going to go with the Oath of Humility. I think this could be good. But I think we take the Oath of Humility first. And I'm deciding now. I wasn't going to go to Helenburg, but I think it makes sense to. If we can get there before nightfall, please. Yes, that way we could check out their hires. If they have anyone here, maybe that we could pick up. Anyone with kind of a lowly background. A Houndmaster, perhaps. If he be nice if he came armed. A mason is an honorable man. An honorable trade. We don't have any armor for him. Check the marketplace before we make any decisions. Would be nice to pick up a basic male shirt. Prices to sell here aren't incredible. Hmm. Staff sling, interesting weapon. Kettle Hat's a decent pickup as well. Having it be broken. Do we have anyone who could really use a Kettle Hat? Not at the moment. Yeah, I'm not wowed by anything right now, so I, I think I will pass. And I'm going to sell a lot of this junk. Holding on to others. Now that we're paying, what are we paying? 125 crowns a day. Ugh. We're going to start feeling the sting of that. It would be really good to get a decent weapon like a war fork on Arathorn. That way I don't feel compelled to use this hunting bow. Once we run out of ammo, I, we just don't have the money right now to buy more. I'd love to buy this basic male shirt. It's just not going to happen. Let's just check the rest of this stuff just for fun. To see what's in here. Anything amazing. Salet helmet. Excellent piece of armor there. Alright. We'll pass. I think we pass. Tobjorn could be okay. Getting a kennel master could be okay. Just for the events. Do we already have a brawler? I think so, right? Yes, we do. I'd like to not duplicate these these backgrounds. Tempted to go for the Kennel Master. Uh, don't. Oh, man. It's going to bite me in the butt. But I'm going to do it. Randolph the Kennel Master. A young bird hunting Randolph quickly saw the honor, loyalty, and workmanship of a dog. The man made a great deal of money on the dog fighting circuits. Ugh, kind of don't like that. His much renowned for their easily commanded and unleashed ferocity. An interesting prospect. You can only hope Randolph is as loyal as the dog he once commanded. I think it makes sense that our knightly type characters would love to have a kennel master. 
someone to command the dogs. And at some point, we will have tons of dogs. Make no mistake. Let him in. And hope he doesn't suck. That's all we can do. War dogs unleashed by him will start at confident morale. He's got tough, so a bonus 10 hit points with three stars in hit points. That's crazy. But he has a fear of greenskins, which we can work with. Got a little net there we had to pay for. Hmm. Could really use his uh, his other injuries getting healed, since he already has a broken knee and one eye. Galdrick, man, I hope you make it. I hope he makes the distance. Something like this, perhaps. All right, that's all. That's all we can afford to do. And then I can't. I can't afford to get us any dogs, sadly. Let's keep going. Could really use another fight here. I think we tried dusty walls and got wrecked. We're not going to make that mistake again. Though we're definitely in a better position than we were last time with more bros. We just don't have the stats. We don't have the stats and we don't have the gear. Now there might be some like, yeah, some slingers and cutthroats. We can kill these dudes. This is perfect for us. Nice that we were able to get multiple fights along the way. Some outlaws and some archers. Definitely can't mess with those dudes. And they're on a hill. That's rough. That means we have to charge up a hill to get to their little camp location. So slingers generally suck. We don't really have to be that worried about them. Let's see. The game's giving them a little bit of high ground. Probably they'll take it. we back up here let's see where they choose to go and we're in great shape just pass try to land some shots try to freak them out I'll stay there. And we spear wall here. See how those dudes want to move. That's an easy kill. And the fact that two of their bros are slingers means their front line is just crazy weak and they're, and they're going to get smashed. Alright, broke my spear wall down. That's, that's not cool. Even though we've got crummy armor, I think this is fine. And we're slowly running out of... Out of ammo. Excellent. So with that, we're going to step into here. Try to make sure that guy doesn't run. Step into here. Step here. And just get everyone tied up here. I'd like to get these weapons. Uh, those slings, they're the better versions of the normal slings. And they don't take any ammo. Which is why we would use them. They're definitely not better than a hunting bow. Don't get that twisted. But they are quite nice. And they're a great alternative when you're broke. We'll run them down. And they're even quite nice because they, uh, I think they do okay damage in melee as well. I think. Don't, don't quote me on that. We got one of them, a Nomad Sling. I have to look at it. I, I think it counts as a two-handed weapon. It can also bop you on the head. Nice. We got 30 ammo. Pretty big and a little bit of extra food, which we needed, even though it's going to spoil quickly. But the game will prioritize it. Great. We needed the food. Oh, maybe it didn't prioritize it. The sling here. Now we don't really need to do that, though. Could give it here. 
I thought for sure if you were in melee, you could hit someone with this. Hmm. I might be wrong, guys. I thought for sure, though. We've got a better helmet. Let's give him that. And we got a level. We got a level on Arathorn. Great. So, you good, sir. Let's just go with Brawny as well. Kind of boring in the beginning, but it, it's going to pay off. N another natural four in, in range skill. I think that's we've had multiples of those. Four there is tempting. I think this is a case where we take the two in melee skill. He's got to be able to hit. And eventually his bill hook or whatever he's going to be using will probably do more or just as much damage. As everything else. So let's get these hyenas too. Another great pickup if they drop loot. Man. You nerds. But this is good. We're getting here just in time to take another arena fight. And then to basically rest here. And then get another arena fight. They have ambush trade routes. Worth paying attention to that. Jacoba the undefeated is still here. Still looking swole. Nomads. I don't think they have anything new. A disowned noble. Very cheap. Very cheap at 510. Are they always that cheap or does he just have such terrible gear? I'm not above including a disowned noble. I feel like a religious, like a, a zealot religious organization like ours would welcome disowned nobles as part of like their probably most common recruiting groups. The prices to sell here are incredible. We need to do that. Not that we have really anything to sell. I'm going to sell the net too. I'm, I'm just going to get rid of everything like that for now. Very good price on a Southern Mail shirt. And we need it. I'm going to buy it. We're going to win. We're going to win this that we're about to do this, uh, this arena battle. I have no fear. There we go. That's that's a good bit of an upgrade. And if you're not going to be in the front lines, Randolph the Kittlemaster will be for now. I'll try and make use of this sling, though. I don't know if I can promise much. Not bad. Man, if I can't hit someone in the face with this, I need to have this in my back pocket. I also see this other helmet, which is a decent pickup. It's a little bit damaged, so it's on a bit of a discount. Okay. With that, we really have to win this arena. We'll check out the contract in a second. We'll slaughter them like land. It's a spider. Okay. Webnecks. Nice. Our first time fighting them. Four of them? Okay, but for 500 crowns, we accept. There's no way we can't beat them. So let's get our bros. Muldoon here. Um, I don't think Galdrick is going to be taking any more fights until his skills come up. Though he probably could. The only way we're going to counteract his, his permanent injury, the broken knee, which is the, the primary crappy one, is by leveling him. Getting him stronger. Um, you here, or Hamian, that's good. And then we still have these two injuries here on Miguel. Could bring in Arathorn, just give him better gear. But no, Galdrick, Galdrick's coming in. It's only right. Let's get him in. Just wish he didn't have all these injuries on top of injuries on top of injuries. Let's do it. Can we beat the spiders? We should be able to. Ugh, wish me luck. Generally, if we land our shots, this is easy, easy, easy. If we don't land our shots, we're going to have a bad time. And we do kind of want to cuddle together here. The AI is too smart. I think mostly for the shield wall parry play. And we just pass here. There's no reason to, to burn our fatigue and stuff. What I'd like to do here is shield wall parry. But they're not even going to attack me this turn. This guy's going to web me. 
So what the web does, you see here, it lowers my damage, melee defense, range defense, all that stuff. So we're going to break free, which is not always easy to do as it just happened. A lot of times it's quite hard to do. Wonderful. Killing two of them like that is, is great. See if he jumps in here. Okay, he went for the poison spit. Here we're just going to go for the attack. Step in, go for the attack. I'm much more keen on removing the web in a real battle where my movement is very important. Break free, step in. And you know what? I'll break him free mostly for the stat difference. And the rotation was nice too. Having minus 50% damage does suck. And down they go. Awesome. Awesome easy fight for us. And the money is very much appreciated. And we can check out this contract, but two skulls is maybe a little spooky for us. What do you need? Let's talk about it. Drive off nomads. I accept, but once again, if this is a type of fight that we just cannot win, then, I mean, it, it'll be what it'll be. How far away is it? Far enough that I think we should just camp. We've got brothers that have serious injuries. We have armor that needs repairing. And then in the morning, we'll take the fight. We'll take the next arena fight, and then we'll go off to war. All right, and at dawn, we're here again. How much are tools? I think winning the arena fights also makes them like us more. Which in turn gives us better prices. Oh, I can't do it while I'm contracted? God dog it. I totally forgot about that. Okay. So this actually this could be really bad. I have to hurry up, get here, and then come back. Which we might be able to do. It's cutting it close. These guys are a pain. They're basically they might soften us up before the main fight. Hate to see that they're shielded. That favors the AI for sure. And I forgot to re-equip my skull. Oh, nice. L super low chance to hit there. Just going to take the easy kill right off the bat. Hoping to... Yeah, and I wanted that kill really bad because I wanted to start to break them like Drago and, and Rocky we got a 24 here I'll take it and I'm I can't switch of course I took a shot I should have switched to a pitchfork I feel but maybe we'll take some shots at these nomads in the back with the slings they're basically two dudes who aren't even here that's I mean that's how bad the slings are in their hands step in here with Miguel even though he's got two injuries pretty much knew I was stepping into a triple surround hopefully it doesn't bite me okay not too bad that was great unexpected completely unexpected and great Let's see if we can smack him with a rock beautiful wasn't expecting to get that hit Okay, I'm going to step here, save some room for our boy. Nice. And with that, okay, this guy's going to run. No, he's not. He's going to stand and try to hit us with rocks. We can't quite get to him there. But I think we can get to him here. And down he goes. Excellent. Love that the experience is getting spread around too. I'm pretty sure if it's still the same thing, it's the guy who gets the final kill is the one who gets the majority of the experience. 
Got more ammunition back. This, I mean, this fight ended up being just a net, super net positive. Really no downsides from that at all. Let's give our boy that back. Uh, I need to get Rally the Troops on Urhamian. There's also a lot of other options here. Reach Advantage, for instance. Anytime you use a two-handed melee weapon, adds a stack of Reach Advantage whenever you land a hit. That increases your melee defense. This is much better with, um, like, great swords and stuff. Overwhelm is quite nice. I don't know. None of, the, none of this stuff really applies to him. It's when we get to Battleforge, Berserk. These are the two we really want. Um, he may end up staying a Polar Master at some point. But for right now, let's get Rally the Troops. It could become pertinent pretty damn soon. I'm going to take this 4 here in Fatigue. That's an excellent roll for him. I'm going to take this 5 in Resolve because we need to get that up a bit more. And I'm going to take a 3 in Melee Defense for him. The roll for melee skill was weak. I saw there was a good hit point roll, but that's just not necessary at 78 hit points. I think he's doing okay. Miguel here. What did we decide for Miguel? Let me see. I have I have my little notes here. Miguel wants to be a two-hander eventually, which is not impossible. Happy to see a three in fatigue. Happy to see a three in melee defense. And then I think here we want to take a two in melee skill small as that role might be we don't know which weapon he's going to be specializing in but he will be quite special his stats are good enough he could become a, a quite a solid two-hander here and with that i think I'm, i will decide on pulling the trigger on a crippling strikes executioner build could go for recover there i mean there's a lot of things we could do really someone else suggested not resilient. I'm trying to remember. Someone else gave me a, a decent suggestion for another option. Adrenaline. That's what it was. They were saying go in Adrenaline build. I've done that before with my uh, Warriors of the North campaign, which is one of our most successful campaigns and longest running and most viewed, in, uh, coincidentally, on YouTube, um, where I, I used Adrenaline a lot. I want to say the reason why I stopped taking it is because they, they changed the way certain things work. Like waiting and stuff changed. They added like a, a fatigue draining component to it, which I think relentless stops. Yeah, or it gives you a penalty to initiative. I, I don't remember, guys. My, my memory is a little hazy on this. But what Adrenaline does, and the, the barbarians in the north use this ability a lot... It puts you first in the turn order for the next round to have another turn before your enemies do. Feel the adrenaline rushing through your veins. It comes at the cost of um, a fatigue, however, I'm pretty damn sure. This is great. What, what I think I'm going to do, though, is take Crippling Strikes Executioner, and where I find I have a free perk or an available perk, we're going to go with adrenaline. I, I like that idea. Keep in mind, Crippling Strikes is amazing versus all humans, all beasts, all living creatures, but it, it does literally nothing versus the undead. And there are several other traits, or perks rather here, that kind of have the vice versa effect that are really good when fighting the, the undead, but don't do much whenever you're fighting uh, the living. But this will make us incredible at killing other humans. So we're going to take that. Crippling Strikes. And then what Executioner does is if something has an injury, which we're hoping to cause by having Crippling Strikes, then um, they take 20% more damage. And then when they're injured, they their stats are reduced. They have less likely of a chance to hit you, which is great defensively, and it can be great offensively depending on what the injury is. And of course, you don't really get to choose your injury, but you guys know what I'm saying. Nice natural four there. I'll take a 5 in hit points. Do we just pump this guy's hit points like through the friggin' roof? Just make him the unholy god of hit points. I'm going to take the 4 in melee skill, or the 2 in melee skill here, because he's got to have something. He's got to have something. This is That's just terrible. Could make this dude just a massive defensive juggernaut. Give him, make him the taunt. The taunt lord. Just give him the biggest shield we can get. Biggest armor, maybe even keep him as a spear user, perhaps. And uh, 
Yeah, just make him the king of taunts. I like that idea a lot. But that was nice. That was a good pickup, man. Three stars and hit points. I don't even know if I've ever seen that before. He's level two and he's almost got 100 hit points. That's wild. All right, let's roll on. We've got time for one more fight today. Let's make it a good one. I'm anticipating it being something difficult. Ooh, okay, okay. The nomads are surprisingly stationary and surprisingly many, but it appears there's a reason for that. You find the sand dwellers huddled around a hole in the ground. They've constructed pulleys around it and are working feverishly to drag up whatever it is they found in the desert. Based upon the grin of the man overseeing the operation, it is no doubt a trove of treasure. You could attack now and face more opposition, or you could wait until they're done and have left with whatever they're digging up. This is quite the dilemma, isn't it? This fight will be more difficult if we attack now, but the prizes will be better. Although, in my experience, the treasure is usually a couple hundred crowns. It's like a signet ring or something. Something that's only worth a little bit. And our company is still a little bit trashed and still a little bit trash. But I am greedy, and I'd love to try and take this just for the fun of it. We're going to attack now. This might be one of those battles where we end up having to take it multiple times, but look at the weapons. If I could get this two-handed scimitar or this two-handed mace, I would be over the moon. These guys are outlaws, though. Even though they're wearing really crappy armor... Man, 13% chance is trash. They're wearing really crappy armor. They're not easy to hit. This guy's got to go. We don't want to get hammered. Could come out here and just try to 1v1 this nerd. But instead what I'm going to do is this. Come on man. Triple surround. Get the kill. Excellent. Hammer goes down. This weapon is ranged. By the way, it's a, it's a two range weapon. Would be amazing on one of our backline bros. Happy to see two slingers. They're essentially useless. This weapon is... These weapons are incredibly dangerous. They've, they've got to go as soon as possible. Beautiful. Now someone's about to get bopped by this. Excellent. It can only attack once, which is another big drawback of it. 12% chance, huh? Let's step in here and just try to kill this guy. He's the one who has to go down. Step in here for coverage versus the stones. And if this guy wants to step in, he's going to have a bad time. Very good hit. We hit him in the head. Ripped his ear. I don't know what exactly that injury does to him, but assuming it's painful. And we got the weapon! Holy crap, our two-handed dreams are coming true right before our eyes. We could send Randolph here to try to engage this guy to keep him away from our back line. Um, but I think it's more important that we come back here and try to engage this dude. And start getting rid of these guys. And I need to switch to this weapon because it might be key in keeping us safe. Step in here so we can hit both of them. Awesome. The fact that they're missing with these very deadly attacks is great for us. We are gonna we can rotate out here. Once we... Well, we'll have to see. I think we rotate with our Hamian. Did they just hit their own bro in the back of the head? Super sick. And good for us. Okay. We... Very sketchy. This does not, in fact, allow us to hit in melee. So, we've just tested it. We take the kill. Hopefully to freak them out. We move in here. We're playing a little bit of risk with Arathon here. Move in here to take the hits. This guy's got to go. And he already wants to go. Having him wavering is huge. Man, this outlaw missing three times in a row has been clutch for us. And this guy whiffing here has been clutch as well. We'll take the hit. Try to get the hit. That would have been nice. We would have done bonus damage. <clears throat> Excuse me. We would have done bonus damage because we're two-handing a one-handed weapon. Gotta go. 
and we'll switch out here. Kind of always the plan. Nice shot from the sling. Got to give your enemies kudos where deserved. Didn't hit a single attack on that dude. His shield wall held. Yeah. Big hit was incoming any, any second now, basically. A rock could damage us now. Beautiful. And he lowered his shields. Miguel needs to run. We didn't get the weapon. Man. Rigged. We got the one weapon, so I'm not I'm not I'm not really upset. Getting one of those great weapons was more than enough. Down you go. And those are tier two swords as well. Yeah, we just run. No reason to tempt fate. These walls are a little annoying. This guy's gonna run and there's nothing we can do to stop him. But this slinger here is gonna get crushed. Man, I guess I guess we'll move up. Just pass. Keep chasing. Little injury there. And we can attack over walls. Wait and wait. Wait. Scare him a little bit more, get a better surround, and that's it. Glad we were able to take that fight. Getting that two-handed mace would have been incredible. But getting that two-handed scimitar is great. The two-handed Saif. Wonderful. Wonderful pickup. Happy to see that helmet grab as well. We got a grenade, a fire pot. Huh. I don't know if we debase ourselves to using such such sorcery. And for our trouble, we got ancient gold coins and a jade brooch, so I totally eat my eat my words here. This is a lot of money. The nomad slain, you naturally go see what the hell they were digging up out of the earth. You stand over the pulley they rigged up and stare into the hole. A chest can be seen with ropes already bound around it. You thank the dead nomads for all the work they've done, then turn to easily pull the chest up and out of the ground. We open to find incredible treasure, which we'll see. Weren't the prices of Hakim al Ramal incredible for selling? If so, we sell those right now and make a fortune. And just like that, we financially completely turn everything around. And we're even going to make it in time. They no longer have ambush trade routes, which means the prices will be worse. Um, but we got 640. We take this here, and we're going to have time to do an arena. Awesome. So let's see. What are they worth? The prices here are still good. 19 still tells me that the prices are great. Um, around 16-ish was where I would consider not selling them. But a grand, 500, we sell that. We make that money all day. We sell that here. Fire pot's worth keeping. I'm joking. We'll, we'll use them if we get them, but we're not going to pay for them. That feels a little bit like um, going against kind of the spirit of this run. And happy to get these scimitars. Even the two-handed mallet's not a bad pickup. But the two-handed save is huge. And we need to equip that helmet on someone. Someone who's in the front lines, preferably. Great helmet there. And we know now how badly the Nomad Sling kind of sucks. So until his range skill gets up a little bit more. Another foreign range skill. Very happy with that. I'll take a 3 in melee skill and a 3 in melee defense. I usually don't pass fatigue at all. Let's grab Brawny here. But his fatigue is okay. The question is, who gets the two-handed Saif? And I feel like it has to be Mudun. But Galdrick always wanted to be a two-hander. And now he is, living his best life. And fulfilling his dreams. But he needs to have good armor. And I think that's the best armor we can put him in right now. Aside from giving him, you know, like Mudun's armor. Okay. We 
We take the three in melee skill, even though it's not great considering what he could have. We take the three in melee defense. That knee is really killing him. It's going to always be killing him. And then instead of going for high melee defense, which he'll basically never have. Because this is just going to eat away all the points we put in it. I think we have to ignore it. Let me know in the comment section if you think that's what I should be doing. This is going to lower initiative, range defense, melee defense. I think we just ignore it. We pump HP for his, his defense. And just... I mean, this is basically us putting two points in melee defense. Maybe even, like, a little less, really. I'm going to take the four roll and resolve. Two-handers, I usually use them in such a way that they, uh, they sometimes find themselves isolated. And having good resolve on them is important. Um, this is a two-handed cleaver weapon. Okay. Is this enough for me to want to go straight to cleaver mastery? Potentially, I like to have one cleaver, bro, because the Irajox weapon is incredible. And if you don't know what that is, it's a it's kind of a sick boss weapon that you're going to get every single run. Um, and you want to have someone who's a master in cleavers to use it. And I think it is. I think it's enough for me to go, boom, Galdrick the Knee is going to be our cleaver master. So he's going to build up less fatigue when he uses his skills. And he's going to double the bleeding damage. And disarm only has half the penalty to hit. Okay. That's, uh, that's, that basically goes with the whip. Uh, but now he's got an awesome weapon and he's good to go. He knows his purpose in life is to cleave, to cleave the enemies. Muldoon here. Let's level you, bro. And we're going to go a little bit long. I'm cool with it. Let's go three in melee skill. Let's take the four in fatigue, the natural four. And he could become a duelist. I don't see a ton of value in that. I'd rather him be heavily armored. I just don't know if I want him as a two-handed bro or as a sword and board bro. Just keep him the way he is. I think it's kind of cool. But he's shaping up to be another like potential sergeant type character. And we don't meet, need too many more of these like high four rolls to get him there. To give him rally. To let him carry the skull, basically. And now we have two good sources of Rally the Troops, which is what I always like to have in my Let's Plays. So, I think that's a good pickup for him. And we could, if we wanted to, get them, uh, where is it, Fortified Mind, which would give him 25% bonus resolve. And then never put another point in resolve ever again. possible who's going to use the fire pot let's give it to zahiri and let's also give him the scimitar here which is a good weapon better than the saif we were using not better than the arming sword but let's give him this as well still has a bonus plus 10 percent chance to hit because it is a sword and excellent we've sorted this out nicely and just because we can, guys, let's... Go ahead. Excuse me. Let's go ahead and do the arena battle. And then we'll call it for the day. And we even have another contract. That's great. Oh, no. Oh, no. Two gladiators. This is not good. I accept for the fun of it, guys. But this is one of those fights we might have to take a couple times. Fighting gladiators is not easy. And our bros are a little bit beat up. So basically, it would be obviously these two. And then I would like to bring Galdrick here. His armor's kind of trashed and his body's trash still. Let's equip here equip here we just we might not just purely just don't have the stats what we could do and I've done this before can we not start with it in our hand 
There we go. My bad. So, could start something like this and try to catch them in the fire and then engage them. Because they're going to be super hard for us to hit. This armor is toast. We need better armor. This is so rough. It might be better just to put in Randolph and have him just shield tank everything. That is also possible. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Let's give him the gear. Give him that. He can pull his shield out after. As much as I want to bring him in and get his pit fighter up, this is the play, I think. Make sure we switch that out or else we're going in with two guys. Okay. Full armor, full HP. And we're throwing fire potions. Oh my god. Let's give them something to cheer for. Our first gladiator fights. Oh my god, he's got a bardage and a and an axe. And they're splitting right off the bat. Pretty sneaky, sis. So here's what we do. We move back one. Yep. See that? Unfortunately, we have no range to punish this behavior. But they're going to step in. I'm not engaging. Okay, this is what we needed. Boom. So if this guy st tries to step in here, he's going to get cooked. And if he goes around to the side, we want that. So we throw that, we equip our shield. Boom. Try to get the hit. The Bardich wants to trade places with this guy. That way he can get a line shot on us. I don't know if they have rotation, but I'm going to kind of assume they do. Let's see. Okay, footwork. Footwork is really bad for us. Because it means we can't pin them in the fire. Oh, no. So the grenade did some nice initial damage, but that's it. Here we go. And now he's going to... Okay, he's got Overwhelm. Knock him back. Move up here. Get a better surround. I'm even tempted to come here. We do not want this... Nice. We do not want this guy to get a line shot. The Bardich hits in a... Just like the Greatsword does in a straight line. But it, do, it cannot cleave like the axes do. So we step in here. It makes our offense worse on our Hamian. But it makes it better on everyone else. And it scares him. A little. Nice. Okay, footwork. MVP here. Ah, we gave him the line shot. But can we... Nice. Trying to break my awesome shield. I was about to say, here goes the line shot. That took half of my armor. Good hit. His armor is gone. But with Overwhelm on us, our chances to hit are very low. Alright, shield is gone. Armor's almost gone. I was going to say, here comes another line shot. Ugh. Stepping in here was bad. It gave me a good attack, but it was bad. And I don't have any way of changing it now. My, my knockbacks failed. This is a fight I think we can win, but them having footwork was kind of unexpected. I, sh I should have expected it and didn't, but here we go. God, that sucks. He's going to kill Mudun, no problem. 
Yeah, we might have to take this fight a few times, but I think it's winnable. I think the AI's behavior was super smart this fight, but I could see them making some worse decisions. Them, like, not using footwork and just staying in the fire. Jesus. Yeah, and this guy's going to kind of solo us, and us stepping away here ended up being a really bad move. I didn't expect our bro to die like that. But a fighting axe is a powerful weapon. Because now, yeah, he's just going to come back. Whereas if I had stayed next to him and he ran, we would have been able to get the hit. And then the whiff there, now we just get wrecked by the Bardage. I'm just curious whether or not our Hamian here has got what it takes to finish these dudes. Probably not. Because we're, yeah, we're about to get super smashed. And down we go. It was, it was worth a shot, guys. Disaster. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. My name is Brett. Channel's Good Talk Gaming. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Let me know if you want to claim any of these guys that we have that aren't named yet currently. Would love to have y'all do that. Take care. See you in the next one.